Good morning, everybody, and welcome to this service here on Zoom for Palm Sunday. Uh, so just a few notices, as, as always, before we begin. Uh, the first one is just to remind you of all the additional special services coming up as we now enter Holy Week. Um, and the first one after today will be on Monday, Thursday at 7.30 p.m. here on Zoom, uh, followed by another service on Good Friday, also at 7.30 p.m., uh, again on Zoom. Uh, then there's then those services on Holy Saturday, but then we will be back here next Sunday on Easter on Easter Sunday uh, for the 10:30 a.m. Easter Sunday service. Uh, during this week of Lent, of course, uh, there will be daily devotions, and I'm sure many of you will remember some weeks ago you would have had a pack put through your letterbox by a volunteer containing a number of uh, articles. One of which is this this very handy little booklet, which is the daily devotions uh, uh, guide. And this effectively has a small service in it each day uh, that you can follow at home. Uh, those services will be recorded by Clive and Fiona and they'll be available on the website and on the YouTube channel to watch uh, and follow along with your books. And um, also in that pack, you will have a Palm Cross. You will need the Palm Cross today because today is Palm Sunday. Uh, so if you don't have your Palm Cross to hand, I would suggest taking the opportunity of the few moments when everybody else is taking part in a few moments of silence and listening to the bells to go and find your uh, your pack and, and out of it, recover your Palm Cross. Um, so I will now play the bells while, while you all go and find your Palm Crosses. I hope you enjoy the service, thank you. to this Palm Sunday. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Behold, your King come to you. Hosanna to the Son of David, the King of Israel. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the greatest. Dear friends in Christ, during Lent, we have been preparing by works of love and self-sacrifice for the celebration of our Lord's death and resurrection. Today we come together to begin this solemn celebration in union with the church throughout the world. Christ enters his own city to complete his work as our saviour, to suffer, to die, and to rise again. Let us go in faith and love, so that, united with him in his sufferings, we may share his risen life. Now, this is the moment that you need your palm crosses. So if you uh, hold your palm cross, God, our saviour, whose son, Jesus Christ, entered Jerusalem as Messiah to suffer and to die. Let these palms be for us signs of his victory and grant that we who bear them in his name may ever hail him as our king and follow him in the way that leads to eternal life who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And now I invite Rex to read the Palm Gospel. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. As they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethphage and Bethany at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and just as you enter it, 
you'll find a colt tied there, which no one has ever ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you why, why are you doing this? Say, the Lord needs it and will send it back here shortly. They went and found a colt outside in the street, tied at the doorway. As they untied it, some people standing there asked, What are you doing, untying that colt? They answered as Jesus told them to, and the people let them go. When they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks over it, he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, while others spread branches they had cut in the fields. Those who went ahead and those who followed shouted, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our father David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Jesus entered Jerusalem and went into the temple courts. He looked around at everything, but since it was already late, he went to Bethany with the twelve. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. And we turn now to our colleague, our special prayer for today. So let us pray. True and humble King, hailed by the crowd as Messiah, Grant us the faith to know you and love you, that we may be found beside you on the way of the cross, which is the path of glory. Amen. And now we have our first hymn, and the hymn is Ride On, Ride On in Majesty. eternal glory. Christ humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even death on a cross. Therefore God has highly exalted him and given him the name that is above every name. Praise, Praise to you, you, O Christ, King of eternal King of glory. glory. The Passion of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. It was two days before the Passover and the festival of unleavened bread. 
The chief priests and the scribes were looking for a way to arrest Jesus by stealth and kill him. For they said, Not during the festival, or there may be a riot among the people. While he was at Bethany, in the house of Simon the leper, as he sat at the table, a woman came with an alabaster jar of very costly anointment of nard, and she broke open the jar and poured the ointment on his head. But some, there, some were there who said to one another in anger, Why was this ointment wasted in this way? For this ointment could have been sold for more than 300 denarii and the money given to the poor. And they scolded her. But Jesus said, Let her alone. Why do you trouble her? She has performed a good service for me, for you always have the poor with you, and you can show kindness to them whenever you wish, but you will not always have me. She has done what she could. She has anointed my body beforehand for its burial. Truly, I tell you, wherever the good news is proclaimed in the whole world, what she has done will be told in remembrance of her. Then Judas Iscariot, who was one of the twelve, went to the chief priests in order to betray him to them. When they heard it, they were greatly pleased and promised to give him money. So he began to look for an opportunity to betray him. On the first day of unleavened bread, when the Passover lamb is sacrificed, his disciples said to him, Where do you want us to go and make preparations for you to eat the Passover? So he sent two of his disciples, saying to them, Go into the city, and a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him, and wherever he enters, say to the owner of the house, The teacher asks, Where is my guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? He will show you a large room upstairs, furnished and ready. Make preparations for us there. So the disciples set out and went to the city and found everything as he had told them, and they prepared the Passover meal. When it was evening, he came with the twelve, and when they had taken their places and were eating, Jesus said, Truly, I tell you, one of you will betray me, one who is eating with me. And they began to be distressed. And to say to him, one after another, Surely not I. It is one of the twelve, one who is dipping bread into the bowl with me. For the Son of Man goes as it is written of him. But woe to that one by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better for that one not to have been born. While they were eating, he took a loaf of bread, and after blessing it, he broke it, gave it to them, and said, Take, this is my body. Then he took a cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it to them, and all of them drank from it. This is my blood of the covenant which is poured out for many. Truly, I tell you, I will never again drink of that fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. When they had sung the hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. And Jesus said to them, You will all become deserters. For it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep will be scattered. But after I am raised up, I will go before you to Galilee. Peter said to him, Even though all become deserters, I will not. 
Truly, I, I tell you, this day, this very night, before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. Even though I must die with you, I will not deny you. And all of them said the same. They went to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here while I pray. He took with him Peter and James and John and began to be distressed and agitated. And he said to them, I am deeply grieved, even to death. Remain here and keep awake. And going a little farther, he threw himself on the ground and prayed that if it were possible, the hour might pass from him. Abba, Father, for you all things are possible. Remove this cup from me, yet not what I want, but what you want. He came and found them sleeping, and he said to Peter, Simon, are you asleep? Could you not keep awake one hour? Keep awake and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. And again he went away and prayed, saying the same words. And once more he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were very heavy, and they did not know what to say to him. He came a third time and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? Enough. The hour has come. The Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up. Let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. Immediately, while he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived, and with him there was a crowd with swords and clubs from the chief priests, the scribes and the elders. Now the betrayer had given them a sign. The one I will kiss <clears throat> is the man. Arrest him and lead him away under guard. So when he came, he went up to him at once and said, Rabbi and kissed him. Then they laid hands on him and arrested him. But one of those who stood near drew his sword and struck the slave of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Then Jesus said to them, Have you come out with swords and clubs to arrest me as though I were a bandit? Day after day I was with you in the temple teaching, and you did not arrest me, but let the scriptures be fulfilled. All of them deserted him and fled. A certain young man was following him, wearing nothing but a linen cloth. They caught hold of him, but he left the linen cloth and ran off naked. They took Jesus to the high priest, and all the chief priests, the elders, and the scribes were assembled. Peter had followed him at a distance, right into the courtyard of the high priest, and he was sitting with the guards, warming himself at the fire. Now the chief priests and the whole council were looking for testimony against Jesus to put him to death, but they found none. For many gave false testimony against him, and their testimony did not agree. Some stood up and gave false testimony against him. We, we heard him say, I will destroy this temple that is made with hands, and in three days I will build another not made with hands. 
But even on this point, their testimony did not agree. Then the high priest stood up before them and asked Jesus, Have you no answer? What is it that they testify against you? But he was silent and did not answer. Again, the high priest asked him, Are you the Messiah, the Son of the Blessed One? I am. And you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of the power and coming with the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his clothes and said, Why do we still need witnesses? You have heard of his blasphemy. What is your decision? All of them condemned him as deserving death. Some began to spit on him, to blindfold him and to strike him, saying to him, Prophesy! The guards also took him over and beat him. While Peter was below in the courtyard, one of the servant girls of the high priest came by. When she saw Peter warming himself, she stared at him and said, You also were with Jesus, the man from Nazareth. But he denied it. I do not know or understand what you are talking about. And he went out into the forecourt. Then the cock crowed. And the servant girl on seeing him began to say to the bystanders, This man is one of them. But again he denied it. Then after a little while the bystanders again said to Peter, Certainly you are one of them, for you are a Galilean. But he began to curse, and he swore an oath. I do not know this man you are talking about. At that moment the cock crowed for the second time. Then Peter remembered that Jesus had said to him, Before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. And he broke down and wept. As soon as it was the morning, the chief priests held a consultation with the elders and scribes and the whole council. They bound Jesus, led him away and handed him over to Pilate. Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? You say so. Then the chief priests accused him of many things. Pilate asked him again, Have you no answer? See how many charges they bring against you. But Jesus made no further reply, so that Pilate was amazed. Now at the festival he used to release a prisoner for them, anyone for whom they asked. Now a man called Barabbas was in prison, and the rebels who had committed murder during the erection. So the crowd came and began to ask Pilate to do for them according to his custom. Then he answered them, Do you want me to release for you the king of the Jews? For he realised that it was out of jealousy that the chief priests had handed him over. But the chief priests stirred up the crowd to have him release Barabbas for them instead. Pilate spoke to them again. Then what do you wish me to do with the man you call the king of the Jews? Crucify him. Why? What evil has he done? Crucify him. So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released Barabbas for them. And after flogging Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers led him into the courtyard of the palace, that is, the governor's headquarters. And they called together the whole cohort. And they clothed him in a purple cloak. And after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on him. And they began saluting him. Hail, King of the Jews! They struck his head with a reed, spat on him, 
and knelt down in homage to him. After mocking him, they stripped him of the purple cloak and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him out to crucify him. They compelled a passerby who was coming in from the country to carry his cross. It was Simon of Cyrene, the father of Alexander and Rufus. Then they brought Jesus to the place called Golgotha, which means the place of a skull. And they offered him wine mixed with myrrh, but he did not take it. And they crucified him and divided his garments among them, casting lots to decide what each should take. It was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified him. The inscription of the charge against him read, The King of the Jews. And with him they crucified two bandits, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by derided him, shaking their heads. Ah, you who would destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself and come down from the cross. In the same way, the chief priests, along with the scribes, were also mocking him among themselves. He saves others, he cannot save himself. Let the Messiah, the King of Israel, come down from the cross now so that we may see and believe. Those who were crucified with him also taunted him. When it was noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. At three o'clock, Jesus cried out with a loud voice. Eloi, Eloi. Lama Sabachthani, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, Listen, he's calling for Elijah. And someone ran, filled a sponge with sour wine, put it on a stick, and gave it to him to drink, saying, Wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to take him down. Then Jesus gave a loud cry and breathed his last. And the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. Now when the centurion who stood facing him saw that in this way he breathed his last, he said, Truly, this man was God's son. There were also women looking on from a distance. Amongst them were Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James, the younger, and of Joseph and Salome. These used to follow him and provided for him when he was in Galilee. And there were many other women who had come up with him to Jerusalem. When evening had come, and since it was the day of preparation, that is, the day before the Sabbath, Joseph of Arimathea, a respected member of the council, who was also himself waiting expectantly for the kingdom of God, went boldly to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate wondered if he were already dead, and summoning the centurion, he asked him whether he had been dead for some time. When he learned from the centurion that he was dead, he granted the body to Joseph. Then Joseph bought a linen cloth, and taking down the body, wrapped it in the linen cloth, and laid it in a tomb that had been hewn out of the rock. He then rolled a stone against the door of the tomb. Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of Joseph, saw where the body was laid. This is the passion of the Lord. We stand.
stand with Christ in his suffering. For forgiveness for the many times we have denied Jesus. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. mercy. Have mercy. Grace to seek out those habits of sin which mean spiritual death. And by prayer and self-discipline to overcome them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For Christian people that through the suffering of disunity, there may grow a rich union in Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who make laws, interpret them and administer them, that our common life may be ordered in justice and mercy. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who still make Jerusalem a battleground, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who have the courage and honesty to work openly for justice and peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those in darkness and agony of isolation, that they may find support and encouragement. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who weigh down with hardship, failure or sorrow, feel that God is far from them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who are tempted to give up the way of the cross, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. That we, with those who have died in faith, may find mercy in the day of Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Holy God, holy and strong, holy and immortal, have mercy upon us. Far off, but now in union with Christ Jesus, we have been brought near through the shedding of Christ's blood, for he is our peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. So let us offer one another a sign of peace in whatever way you prefer. Maybe wave or peace with you. And now we have our offertory hymn. The offertory hymn is Make Way, Make Way, for Christ the King in Splendour Arrives. <laughs>
true vine and bread of life, ever giving yourself that the world might live. Let us share your death and passion and make us perfect in your love. The Lord is here. His spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right and just. Our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere. To give you thanks, Holy Father. Almighty and eternal God, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. For as the time of his passion and resurrection draws near, the whole world is called to acknowledge his hidden majesty. The power of his life-giving cross reveals the judgment that has come upon the world and the triumph of Christ crucified. He is the victim who dies no more. The lamb once slain who lives forever. Our advocate in heaven to plead our cause. Exalting us there to join with angels and archangels. Forever praising you and saying. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread, and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world. Rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension and looking for his coming in glory. We celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup. And we thank you for counting us worthy to be in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom, all who share the one bread and the one cup, so that we in the company of all the saints may praise and glorify you forever through Jesus Christ, our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. And we pray together the words of the Lord's Prayer in whatever your preferred words are and 
I'm sure Jess will open our mics up so that we can make a glorious sound. So let us pray with confidence as our Saviour taught us. Our Father in heaven, I didn't get that. Could you try again? Fiona, you need to unmute. Every time we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace. church of which we are members is not defined by the walls of a building but it is defined by the body of Christ of which we are members in making our communion spiritually we are joining with Christians everywhere to be nourished by the one who tells us I am the bread of life Jesus is the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed. The body of Christ. Amen. the blood of Christ. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you humbled yourself in taking the form of a servant and in obedience died on the cross for our salvation. Give us the mind to follow you and to proclaim you as Lord and King, to the glory of God the Father. Amen. Amen. Faithful God, may we who share this banquet glory in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, our salvation, life and hope, who reigns as Lord now and forever. Amen. Amen. So thank you to all who have made this service possible. To all of you who have joined us for worship and to those who join later on various platforms. Thank you to Jez who's made all of this possible through the technology. For Rex who's assisted as deacon. For those who read our readings to David for leading us into, in intercessions and for Richard for music. So thank you so much to, to all of you. And our closing words. May the Father who so loved the world that he gave his only son bring you to faith, bring you by faith to his eternal life. Amen. May Christ who accepted the cup of sacrifice in obedience to the Father's will, keep you steadfast as you walk with him the way of the cross. Amen. May the Spirit who strengthens us to suffer with Christ, that we may share his glory, set your minds on life and peace. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit, Enfold you and those whom you love, now and always. 
Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.